Okay. All right. Welcome, everyone. This is Jen, um, Jen Ward. I've been with Dow Labs since October. Um, I'm an acupuncturist, and my past has been in media marketing, but this was before social media. So um, this whole other world happened while I was in acupuncture school. And during lockdown, I was like, okay, I have to figure out this TikTok. Um, and that is how I found Don Gar Dr. Don. Garrison um, on TikTok from Carolina Family Acupuncture. So I asked her to join and here she is. Welcome. Hi, thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. And so um, you are based in South Carolina, correct? Yes. Correct. <laughs> yeah. And so I'm sorry, I'm letting my screen, okay, no one can see my screen. I had all these windows open. So <laughs> we, we had a chat because I just reached out and I thought, uh, this would be so fantastic for a lot of our practitioners that, you know, some are just starting to learn Instagram. I mean, myself, like I said, I was in media and marketing, but then the whole world changed. And now we have Instagram Reels, which we'll talk about today. So, you know, I thought it would be great for you to kind of share some of the things that we talked about, like, you know, how this started, what, what you've learned, what you like, what is frustrating and I'll ask more questions, but yeah, if you could just kick it off with just the general, how, it, how it's going. Sure, yes, it's, it's, share, say everything, right? Um, yeah. <laughs> so I started TikTok um, back in mid-February, um, right before COVID happened. And so um, I had been hearing different you know, things about it. I started following Gary V. Um, and he, he was really big into jumping on TikTok. And, you know, for the longest time, I was like, oh, it's for kids. It's for kids. And then I had this realization of like, well, if oh, yeah. I'm going to be able to keep coming with this medicine, and if I really believe in acupuncture and East Days in medicine, then we should be talking to the next generation, right? Like not just this generation, not just like baby boomers, but Gen Z, because those are going to be the next like area of uh, patients and they're going to be changing the world. So why not get on there? So I decided to get on there and I didn't know what I was doing. I did a couple of videos and then I just happened to stumble upon something and I went viral. And I think part of the reason was because I was one of the first acupuncturists in um, the United States that was doing it. So there's a few of them in India, but I feel like um, there just wasn't that same level of resonance because no, of that. No. So, and all I did was I just showed the acupressure point for Hoku, right? So this is for headache. And I just did a little demonstration that this is for headache and this point went viral. And then I did another and I just, it just kept growing. So I went from like 10 followers to 15,000 followers in, um, like I want to say five days or something crazy yeah. like that. Yeah. And then, um, and then I went from there and I jumped to 40,000 followers. And from there I went to a hundred and then it just kept snowballing over and over and over again. Um, and what it made me realize, I mean, there's a few different things that it made me realize, but one of the big things that it made me realize is that people want to know how to help heal themselves right? They want to understand how to be able to help themselves, especially during this time. And so um, I just wanted to share information. And so I just started like asking them questions and, or answering all the questions that are popping up. And then that gave me more information and content of what to do. And so I've really just been following um, what my requests are. And now I'm starting to get like the same requests over and over and over again. So um, I'm going to start doing honestly, I think I'm probably going to just start redoing some of the videos that were previous. So TikTok's interesting. It's a little different than Instagram. Instagram, it seems like you only have like a couple of days where it actually lives. TikTok's not like that. TikTok, um, the algorithm, and it's been changing, especially during COVID because it went from something that was starting to come about to like blowing up full blown blowing up. Yeah. And now there's actually a lot of acupuncturists on the platform. Um, and some of them have bigger followings than I do. Um, and I think it's just because they're, we're all just kind of doing this. We're all just kind of doing this thing and sharing the information. And it's really neat because it made me realize like how much 
our medicine has to offer and how much we have to offer. And, um, yeah, so that it's been really yeah. fun in that sense. It's so exciting. And I, I love, cause I don't think this came up when we talked previously, but just, you know, again, for the education for younger generations and even just in the time, let's see, I started studying this medicine in 2004. I didn't go to school until 2011 um, officially, but even just in the six years that I was practicing, so like I started seeing younger and younger clients um, and that was like my passion as I loved getting in the workplace and, you know, working with some of the, the younger generation. So I love that that was actually one of the drivers you said to you know get on the platform and you know last I checked I you had over it was over 500,000 followers so from February um and I think you know I think it was like 8 million likes or something so I mean people are really interested in the content um so I would love like you said you're starting to get some of the same questions maybe that you started getting right um so what is it that people you know what it what is it that they are curious about like are there certain conditions that you see a lot of or you know, yeah. how does acupuncture work like what are some of the questions you're getting so it's funny so i haven't been getting a lot of like how acupuncture works and mostly because i think what ends up happening especially with tiktok is that you get niche niche down really quickly so like pretty much the majority of my platform in my profile are just acupressure points that i'm teaching i'm starting to like expand out i've done a few videos i actually done several videos about like you know yin and yang basics and like talking about you know the channels and talking about these other things um, you know, again, it's 15 seconds to a minute, um, is what, you know, the amount of time that you have. So you just have to give like a little teeny tiny bit of information. Um, but those ones, I think because everybody now knows me as like, okay, you know, Hey, I have a cold or like I have a cough or, you know, I have a headache, like what should I do? And then they come in for that. So that's sort of what I feel like my, my profile is known for, for the most part. Um, but the basic ones, I mean, it's pretty simple. Like if you go through mine or like, you know, any of the other acupuncture, you just basically, it's pretty easy. You just go see what like ones have gone viral. So like for me, headache, I mean, everybody deals with headaches. Nausea is a big, big thing. Um, fertility, you know, um, I've had some pediatric questions. I haven't done too much pediatric, mostly because it's typically just me and it's, I, <laughs> I have a hard time like doing tweena. I really just need to bring in a model now and do like uh, a, a few of them back to back. But um, so let me see what else. Um, period cramps, I mean, that one is huge. So it, it's sort of all the ones that I feel like we see in general in our practice, right? I mean, if you have a specialty and you are focusing specifically on fertility or you're focusing specifically on, you know, pain, I also get a lot of pain questions, neck pain, back pain, you know, um, knee pain, all, you know, all of those types of questions I feel like are like the most common ones. So. Yeah. Have you have you had to think about, um, and I don't think we talked about this when we talked, but it's something I just started thinking about. Have you had to kind of think about legality, like what you can say, what you can't say, like how you say certain things or. Yeah. To a certain degree. I mean, I feel like I always say like, try this, right. You want to like, say like, Hey, here's this thing. You can try it. You don't say like, this will cure this, right? You know, like, right. you know that, like you never use the word cure, like acupuncture exactly. don't cure anything, right? Like, so, so it's more about trying. And then I started doing, um, a lot of my profiles, I'll put like, you know, I have the first, cause you can add comments too, to your TikToks and then those ones go up to the top. So I have, um, in the majority of my TikToks, I have like, you know, these are just recommendations. This is not medical advice. Right. Um, right, right, right. So, and that's part of the reason why I haven't really dived into herbs yet. Cause I feel like that 
that for me has been, um, I, I haven't really been able to figure out how to do that in a way that makes me feel comfortable because of that piece. Um, mm -hmm. So I've just yeah. been doing basic acupressure points with that recognition of like, hey, these are not, you know, this is just a recommendation. This is not to cure anything. And like, anytime somebody says like, you know, I get these demands in my profile of like, tell me how to do this. Tell me how to do that. And it's like, I was like, well, or like, show me what, like, give me something to cure this. And so I always ever, I'm very consistent where it's like, anytime I see like that, I say like, well, acupuncture doesn't cure anything. Like, but this point can be beneficial or it can help right. with the symptom right. or, you know, so I really try to be cautious and play that, um, that piece. There's, you know, there's a few good people that are, that are like that, um, you know, not just within the acupuncture, but I'll, I'll tell you a couple of my other favorite, um, favorite, uh, creators on the app. And one of them is actually a chiropractor. Cause I feel like, you know, hand in hand, we go in well, and we've done a couple of collaborations. Um, oh, yeah. so, um, is Jordan. Um, he's, his handle, I think is no, no pain, more gains, but he mm -hmm. just does stretches. So we do something very similar where it's like, we're just giving value. Um, mm -hmm. and so that's all that he does too, is just does stretches. Um, and that's an interesting one because he will do remixes of all the, the, um, sounds, which is really fun. So he basically like will make whatever popular trending sound is and then change the song up uh, around it and then do something for it. So that, he, I mean, he's great. He, he's got like really big following too. And, um, and there's some other, you know, when I first got into the app, what I did is I actually went and I followed, um, all the other doctors. So I didn't necessarily follow the other acupuncturists or nutritionists or like chiropractors. I ended up following mm -hmm. all the MDs because it's like, okay, we want to present this information. We want to be seen as this, you know, yeah, we talk about chi and we love chi, but like, I never talk about chi in most of my videos. I do a little bit, but not too much. But right. like, I, you know, I want to be shown in, in presenting our field as something that is, you know, extremely beneficial. And so I followed all the doctors to kind of see how they were doing it because they can't give any medical advice. Right. And so that has been interesting. Um, I would definitely suggest people to do that because that gives you kind of like a sense of like, okay, how do you do this in a way that is um, professional yet fun, right? Because people really like the, the fun thing about TikTok, it, like, and like any other social media platform, like Instagram is like really like, okay, you know, picture perfect. And like Facebook is really opinionated <laughs> and like TikTok <laughs> is just fun, right? It's right. like people people expect you to, to be a little bit fun and free and out of the box and like goofy yeah, yeah. and weird. And so there's a way that you can really allow your personality to come out like that. And I feel like people, one of the reasons why I feel like it's so popular is because of that piece. Like you have, they want you to be, you know, genuine and authentic. And so, um, you know, just, I feel like that's a big piece about TikTok is just yeah, kind of feeling yeah. that that boundary so yeah. or that like line right yeah awesome advice and and thoughts and one thing that i am so curious about um last night i think it was um i was like okay i need to figure out this whole instagram reels and so i ended up watching it was an eight minute video about how to create 15 seconds on Instagram reels. And I just, I was like, I can't picture doing this. <laughs> like, you know, she was like, okay, and then uh, let me record this. And this is the first three seconds. And then I have five seconds to say this. Yeah. So what is that like? Like, I mean, it, are you at this point, like <laughs> you, know, you, were, you were dabbling in the beginning and at yeah. this point, you know, are you, do you kind of set aside certain hours of your week to say, okay, I'm going to work on these recordings. Does it take, you know, 20 minutes to do one TikTok recording? Like what, what is that like? So I think, it, I mean, those are great questions. And I'll tell you flat out the ones that I do, like in between patients that I've only spent like five minutes on are the ones that have gone viral. Yeah. Like without a doubt. Any of the ones that I've taken longer, like have taint. So just <laughs> that's something. Um, but there's some very basic things anytime, really anytime you're doing and you can utilize this for like YouTube. You can utilize this for anything. But one thing that I've learned is that you always want to start off with a hook, right? So like, um, oops, sorry, there we go. Turn my phone off. Um, 
Uh oh, where'd you go? Oh. Okay. So you always want to start with, can you see me? I can. I can see and hear you. Maybe. Okay. On okay. So you always want to start with a hook. Um, so basically what that means is like any of my videos, and I think I just like accidentally did this and then that's part of what it ended up happening. But a hook is like, Hey, do you have a headache? Or like, let me tell you, you know, five tips for blah, blah, blah. Or, you know, like, did you know ginger works for colds or, you know, whatever that piece is. But that's basically the hook where you want to like get their attention in the hook. You really only want to spend for about like two to three seconds. And then you get into the, like the meat of it like you demonstrate and show what you're going to do and then you always have a call to action at the end so those are sort of like the three steps that you want to do um so like you know for example the one that the first one is i just said like hey you have a headache like don't worry i got you covered and then like find this acupressure point you know i tell them how long to hold it and for that one i didn't have calls to action in the beginning but um you can add a call to action in either in the video itself and say something along the lines of like, you know, um, follow me for more tips or like, you know, Hey, I've got a, you know, an email, like I have a free, like, you know, PDF for, you know, insomnia or whatever that piece is that you're trying to lead them to. So that's an easy way to do it. Um, and sorry, I'm going to see if I can open this up. There you go. Hi. It's, it's oh. weird looking just at myself and not seeing you. Um, <laughs> so that's one basic way that you can do it. Um, you can go into an, and once you start playing around with it, it's actually kind of fun. Then you can add, um, you know, you can add special effects, you can add music, you can add, um, you can break it up like they're what that one was suggesting is like filming different things. And a lot of times yeah. what I've started to do was just um, break it up into teeny tiny sections, have that same like storyline, but just break it up. I won't even change areas, but there's something that happens where if you look slightly different, it draws people's attention. So it helps to have them stay more focused on what you're doing. Um, but in the beginning, I wouldn't really worry about that. Right. Like this is the thing with with any of this stuff is that you're you're going to kind of like mess it up in the beginning yeah. right? because it's yeah. a learning curve. Like mm -hmm. I'm still learning and I've been, you know, and, and I have I like I feel like I've just sort of stumbled upon this and I've been teaching myself how to market and teaching myself about social media. But it takes time. Like I didn't go to school for this. Right. Like I, never used it. I went to school for acupuncture. We had like a you know, a one day marketing course <laughs> in 2009. So I, you know, none of this stuff was there um, mm -hmm. when I got to school. So I've really been having to teach myself. Um, I will say the difference between Reels and TikTok. So Reels is brand, brand new. So if you're already an Instagram user, I would definitely suggest using Reels. And I would suggest using Reels and then adding it to your profile. Um, you can definitely get a boost doing that. Um, because it's new, they're going to push it way more than they're going to push your stories, your IGTV, um, right. or just like the regular news feed. Because it's brand new and they're trying to compete with um, TikTok. Now, the thing is, is like, there's, there's some features that are there. There's some features that aren't there. So I just kind of play around with it. Honestly, what I do is I just like repost all my TikTok videos. Then. That's what I was going to ask if yeah. you're reposting, but yeah. Yeah. And so there's a couple of ways that you can do that um, without the watermarks. So I definitely noticed that if I have a watermark versus no watermark, um, they like it better if there's no watermarks. So I posted with watermarks and there's definitely an easy way to do it. Um, you basically just save it as a live photo, um, upload it as a video in your phone, and then you just edit that video and you just crop because it'll give you a little watermark at the bottom and you just crop yeah. it up. Oh, then, wow. Okay. You just post it on there. So I've been posting on that. Um, I'm also starting to post on Pinterest as well and yeah. on, which is, crazy I know but you can actually get a ton of views through Pinterest 
which is sort of like a back hack that you can do. And I've also started like testing out some of the other like TikTok style ones, like yeah. Trilla and um, I want to say it's like Bite Dance or something. There's a bunch of other like very similar types of ones. So if you already make it, like I already have now a whole um, catalog worth of content. So I just, I don't post the exact same thing to all of them. I'll post it at different times. Yeah, yeah. Um, but now, you know, that's the cool thing is that if you're consistent with this, you build up a whole content library and then you can just keep reusing it. Right. Um, and so, you know, and, and that's what I would really suggest, or you already have all those ideas. And if you have like a one that went really popular, you can just redo it again. Mm -hmm. Right. So like, I'm going to redo the headache one again, because that was like my first really viral video or, um, you know, any of those ones that are really, really popular because the followers that I have now most likely didn't see that stuff back then. I'm not getting followers from it anymore. So it's still on my profile, but I can redo it at this point. So there's definitely a way that you can make it more systematic. Um, but the biggest thing hands down is just be consistent and don't be scared right? Like it's okay. Make a fool of yourself. It's fine. I'm going to tell you a secret. Nobody cares. Like, <laughs> especially on TikTok, there's something really freeing about that versus like Instagram or Facebook. If you don't have a following on TikTok, most people aren't going to see you. Um, it doesn't matter. And then once you actually get enough momentum, like, and you do get seen by people, you know, they don't care because you actually already have that social proof. So like, yeah, yeah. don't be afraid to just go for it and make silly videos and have fun. Cause that's what people really want to do and connect with. Exactly. And I think, you know, all the conversations that I've had with practitioners, just in other fields, um, on, you know, anytime we've done Dow Labs panels, it's just about, right, being that genuine, practitioner that each of us are right because everyone practices a little differently everyone talks about the medicine very differently um so if you do an acupressure video and someone else does an acupressure video it's probably going to be even a little different maybe it's the same point but um yeah. you know and that's the beauty of you know social media is being able to kind of just say hey this is me and i think that's such a big part of our medicine right that patient finding that connection with that practitioner right yeah. it just it just always I think that's such a big part of our medicine and so it's exciting for me to see it's so funny and ironic that I left media because I was like <laughs> I'm so sick of conversations about Facebook and this was in 2010 and that had me leave you know, media and then now I'm like I'm constantly talking about social media as an acupuncturist um, and I haven't like fully embraced, I've embraced it, but not personally myself. So the, um, there was one more question that I had. Um, and now what was it? Um, let me see. There was one last question. Um, I guess the one point that you had, and this also seems to be the theme is consistency, right? Yeah. So for anybody do it, whether it's doing an email newsletter or whether it's, posting, right? Just having some sort of consistency, not just for the client base or the audience or whatever your goals are, but um, I think it also helps us as individuals, right? To have that consistency, have, you know, a plan. So I know some people kind of manage things on their own, others get support. So I think you're getting, or you, you have like a member on your team now that supports you, right? And what point did you kind of decide a little bit? Okay. Sort of. So I'm still kind of in between with this. And, and um, you know, I, I talk about consistency. In all honesty, like, if I was more consistent, I feel like it would be even like, it would be, I would have even more momentum at this point. Mm -hmm. um, and because of, I'm sure, like, I can't be the only like, like mom at home trying to run a business during COVID, right? So there's a certain point of sanity <laughs> that has to happen with this. 
Um, and my goal is to be more consistent and actually set aside times. So I've started doing more schedule blocking so that I'm incorporating and actually spending this amount of time. Like my goal from here is to move into YouTube, which I feel like is okay. a, you know, it makes a lot of sense, um, for me and what I'm trying to do. Um, and so I did, I actually ended up talking to somebody and I'm starting to get some help. Um, but it's really brand new. And so it's still pretty much all on my own. I'm still kind of figuring out stuff. I spend money for consultants to like figure out and really learn this stuff because this has opened my eyes to potential, like in, in, in a way that I never really recognized. And so that's the thing that I would say is like, yeah, sometimes it takes a little bit of time. And I feel like if you're just doing sort of what's normal, which is like, you know, posting on your, you know, which is what I was doing. So that's where I'm coming from when I say what is, I feel like is normal for us as acupuncturists, mm -hmm. right? It's like, you know, posting on your um, Facebook page, like your business page, like once, either once a day or a couple of times a week and then posting on your Instagram page and that's it, you're not really going to generate any. And I think part of it is because one, people don't put their faces on those things, right? Like we're, we're, sh we put, um, like our, you know, a picture of, of, you know, a green tree and talk about like the wood element or like we put a picture of, do you know what I mean? Like there's this way that we, I feel like most acupuncturists I know sort of have that feeling. You know, if you watch and you look at the acupuncturists to have a bigger following on social media is because they're putting themselves out there. They're putting right. their face, they're doing lives. They're like showing and demonstrating and giving value in these other ways instead of just sort of just hiding behind like sort of these Canva, beautiful but Canva right. style photos. And what I've noticed is that when I post something like that, that I spent, you know, 20 minutes in Canva making really pretty and then I put it on, on uh, Instagram, right? And we all do this. So oh, yeah. I'm saying, I'm call myself out That's on this. That's why I'm thing. laughing. <laughs> I get it. And, you, and they're really pretty. Like, you know, I get maybe like at this point, you know, 40 likes. If I post something on like a video, if I just repost one of my TikTok videos, yeah. that thing will get like, you know, 2,000 views, like on my stories, 2,000 views yeah. versus something that doesn't. And it's, it's amazing. People yeah. want to see you yeah. as a practitioner. They want to see you and hear you speak and see what you do. And, um, and I think if you can do that and be consistent with that, whether it's like doing lives or, you know, doing the IG lives, or you can go live in TikTok or, you know, even if you just do those videos and then you repurpose them, do it. Cause I, I, I just noticed a huge, um, shift in that. So yeah. I don't know if that answers your question. Did that answer? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. And thank you so much for your time. I know I said we would go about 30 minutes. We're at that 30 minute mark. I appreciate you taking this time to share with our audience. And, um, the one thing, the one thing that I, um, Sorry. Um, the one thing that I, um, yeah, we, COVID, you know, lots of people <laughs> around. So just, <laughs> I got distracted for a minute. Um, the one thing that always comes up is, um, you know, in the end, like what is the, you know, the ultimate goal. And it's just been exciting because when we talked, I didn't see your face like we just talked on the phone and like just seeing your enthusiasm mm -hmm. for the medicine and the potential of social and you know that's what's been a joy for me since october working with practitioners being at dow and you know really just like helping each other so thank you for taking time out on your friday sorry for that last minute distraction there but. yeah you're so welcome and like if anybody wants to contact me feel free i'm happy to answer questions so. Yeah. And can you say, I, it's going to be posted when the video gets posted, but what is your um, TikTok again? What's your... Yes. Yeah, so my TikTok is at Carolina Family Acu. And then my um, Instagram is at Carolina Family Acupuncture. Um, and then right. you can always just email me at 
Carolina Family for sure at gmail.com. So, uh, so those are some ways to get in contact with me. Great. Yeah. When we um, let folks know, we'll have your um, your handles for all that. So, awesome. anything else that you feel? You, I think I think this was great information and just you know awesome for sharing your experience. Anything else? That you know, I think, I think one additional piece that I would say as what I've been kind of learning, um, and I've been trying to really kind of figure out marketing through this whole process, um, is that don't, sometimes we have to like actually spend a little bit of money to make money. So like finding, you know, if there is somebody that can help you with some of this stuff, don't be shy. Cause I feel like the returns on it are so big, Absolutely. you know, um, I know so many acupuncturists sadly aren't like really making a ton. And especially during this COVID it's really scary. Right. But I think if we can kind of just as a, as a medicine and like as practitioners, really kind of like step it up and do that one we're gonna be i mean our medicine is so amazing right like we're capable of helping so many people but we can't do that if people don't know we're there and so um i like i just can't say enough things about like putting your face out there like getting somebody to help you find some sort of like program um to help you to advertise because there's so many ones out there and mm -hmm. um, they work they really really truly work you just have to put some time and effort in it but like you get an amazing return on it so that's well, that's well, like my last little yeah, piece. yeah. Yeah, I agree. I completely agree. Um, I've been in the online space for 10 years in a different realm. I've been coaching, you know, and seeing these health coaches that started 10 years ago and, you know, seeing some of the acupuncturists that first went online and now with COVID, you know, really getting a chance to kind of see who are these folks that were ready to go and go online and others that are finally kind of saying, all right, it's time, you know, and then others that won't and that's fine right um yeah. everyone's gonna be a little different in how they practice but yeah we have the potential on these platforms to continue to educate and and help because that's really all any of us have have wanted to do is just help as many people as we can worldwide now with possibilities are endless well thank you again um and yeah we'll we'll keep in touch and all the best thank you Bye. Okay. Bye. Thanks.